buck up, buck up, buck up, buck up, buck up. <laughs> you know the deal. to talk about with fractions is called improper fractions. Now in the last video we talked about how what we have here in our diagram represents a whole. Uh, it's if we think about this as a pizza the shaded part represents how much pizza we have left. We have a whole pizza here. Uh, if we were going to write this as a fraction we have two in the denominator because the whole, the one whole, is divided into two equal parts and we have two in the numerator because two of them are shaded. We have a whole pizza. And as discussed in the last video, we wouldn't normally say we have two out of two pieces. We would normally say we have one pizza. So two over two is one. Now one thing we're going to explore in this lesson is the fact that a fraction is actually a division question. And it's always the numerator divided by the denominator. So here our division question is two divided by two and 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So that's another reason why 2 over 2 represents 1. Now in our second diagram here, this is a concept that tends to cause a lot of confusion for students when we're trying to represent what we have here as a fraction. Because if we look at this in terms of pizza, we can look at this and say we know we have two whole pizzas. So we know this is two, two holes here. And if we look at how many pieces we have, which normally goes in the numerator, usually in the numerator is how many pieces there are shaded all together. We can see that we have one, two, three, four, and then we have five, six, seven, eight pieces all together. And that is the number that's going to go in our numerator here how many pieces we have all together. Now, there's a tendency for students to want to put 8 in the denominator here, because if you look at this in terms of how many pieces there are all together out of how many pieces there are, there are 8 pieces. But we know from the previous example, the number in the denominator can't be 8, because if it's 8, then our division question will be 8 divided by 8. Just like in our previous example, our division question was 2 divided by 2. Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1. That's why we have one whole pizza. But if I put an 8 in the denominator here, the answer to that division question is going to be 1. We need the answer to the, that division question to be 2. So what we put in the denominator is always what each whole is broken into, the number of pieces. And again, what's important to note here is the pieces are all the same size. So each whole is split into four pieces. So we actually have eight out of four pieces here, which means we have more than a whole. Uh, and again, looking at this as a division question, eight divided by four does equal two. So you can see once again that a fraction is division, the top divided by the bottom. So here's a, an example of where we have more than a whole pizza, but we don't have, we don't have whole pizzas here. Um, the second pizza does have a fraction uh, of a pizza there. So if we're going to write this as a, as a fraction, well, thinking back to the last example, we've got our denominator. And in our denominator is always the amount of pieces each hole is broken into. And each hole is only broken into four pieces here. So four is going to be our denominator regardless, because that's how many pieces each hole is broken into. They're all the same size, so we're OK. And in the numerator goes the total number of pieces that we have. And we can see that we have a total of seven pieces. If we look at this in terms of uh, another way in terms of how much pizza we have, we know that we have one whole pizza there. And then on the second pizza, we have three quarters of a pizza. So those values are equivalent. Seven over four is the same as one and three over four. So if we look at our next example, uh, again, we want to write that as a fraction. So we're going to look at how many pieces each hole is broken into. And in this case, each hole is broken into three pieces, and they are all the same size. Let's assume they're all the same size. Uh, and in the numerator goes the total number of pieces we have. In this case, we have seven pieces. So the amount of 
pizza here, or this represented as a fraction, is 7 over 3. And, and again, if we think about this in terms of pizza, we know we have two holes, and then on the last one, as a fraction, we have 1 out of 3. So these two values are equivalent. They're just two ways to write the same thing. So let's explore these two examples. Uh, and now let's look at the math that's going on here again. So if we look at the first one we have there, we started with it written as 7 over 4. Now, if you recall, we talked about how a fraction is division. So th this fraction that we have here is a division question. And the question is 7 divided by 4. So if we write that in a long division question, it looks something like this. And if we're going to answer that, well, we can fit 1 into 7, and 1 times 4 is 4. So our remainder is 3. Well, if you look at how we wrote what we actually had there, 1 and 3 quarters, and how that fits with our division question here, that means is, first of all, we can see that there's a fraction with a denominator, and the denominator is the same. So the denominator that we have here is the same as the denominator that we have here. Where the whole number comes from is the answer to the division question. That's how many 4s fit into 7. And where the numerator comes from is the remainder that we have. So we can see mathematically why 7 over 4 is the same as 1 and 3 quarters. If we look at the next example, 7 over 3, well, the division question there is 7 divided by 3. How many 3s can you fit into 7? You can fit 2. That doesn't quite get you to 7, though. That only gets you to 6. So you're left with a remainder of 1, and then our denominator stays the same. So if we look at this in the opposite direction, uh, with the first example, we, we know that 1 and 3 over 4 is the same as 7 over 4. So if we think about mathematically where that comes from, well, first we look at the denominators, and we can see that, that they're the same. The denominators are just simply going to be the same. So the question is, well, where does this 7 come from? Well. If you remember, to, to get our to, to, to change uh, from, from this form, we started by dividing. So if we're going to go the opposite way, it might make sense that we'll start by multiplying. And that is actually what we do. We multiply our denominator here times our, our whole number there, 4 times 1. And then we have to add the numerator. So 4 times 1 is 1. Uh, sorry, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So that's where this... 7 comes from. If we look at the next example, 2 and a third, if we want to change that in the same way, we do 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So that's our numerator again. And our denominator stays the same. Let's look at two more examples of equivalent ways to write these types of fractions. So here we start with 17 over 8. So uh, as discussed, a fraction is just a division question. And the division question there is 17 divided by 8. So how many 8s fit into 17? 2. But that doesn't quite get us all the way to 17. We still have a remainder, and the remainder is 1. And our denominator stays the same. For the next one, we want to write that as a fraction. So we're going to multiply our denominator times our whole number, 5 times 4, which is 20, and then add the numerator. 20 plus 1 is 21. And once again, the denominator stays the same. So let's talk about a little bit of terminology here. We've seen writing these values where we have more than a whole. We've seen them written a couple of different ways, and one way is where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. When you have a value that's bigger than a whole written like that, that's called an improper fraction. If you decide to write it as the number of holes and then the fraction of the last one, uh, we call that a mixed number. So uh, up here, there's our mixed number. That's an improper fraction. 
This one I'm circling here is an improper fraction, and that is a mixed number. So to finish off uh, our lesson here on improper fractions and mixed numbers, I ask you to do a couple of things. So the first question there is to represent that following diagram both as an improper fraction and a mixed number, since we have more than a whole. And for number two, uh, to convert the following. So the first one we have an improper fraction, change that to a mixed number. The second one we have a mixed number, change it to an improper fraction. The last one, we just have a number. See if you can figure out how to write that number as an improper fraction. If you're able to do that, congratulations. You now have a firm understanding of improper fractions and mixed numbers.